Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 50 in our legendary new and improved series of Arduino tutorials. And what we are going to learn today is we are going to learn how to use the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. And I'm going to give you guys a heads up. This is a pretty easy sensor to use, but I am using this series of videos it's going to be kind of a series of videos on this DHT11. And so I'm going to give you guys a heads up that, you know, I've always promised that what we do in this series, you can all do with the components in the eLEGO Super Starter Kit. And so all of these tutorials that I'm doing are based on the components in this. <clears throat> and the good news is the DHT11 sensor is in here. And you can continue through these next lessons using only what is in that kit. But I'm going to give you a heads up of kind of where we're going. We're trying to untether from the desktop computer where we can start developing a little system that we could walk around with. Well, what are we going to need to do if we're going to be able to walk around with this? We're going to need to be able to power the Arduino not plugged into the computer, and we're going to need to be able to have some sort of standalone display on the board, and then we're going to need to be able to get everything hooked up. Now, <clears throat> you will be able to do this with the sensor I mean with the Arduino, the sensor, and the components that came in the kit. But as we start doing more complicated stuff, it would be good if you could get a couple of other things. The All these links are down in the description below. At a minimum, you need the eLEGO kit. A couple of things that would be nice is a little larger prototyping board, a little larger breadboard, a link to a one to one that I like, an Amazon link down in the description below. Also, as we start getting more and more and more wires as the project gets more complicated, you need one of these little kits with these elegant little short jumper wires. You don't want to continue to use these, uh, these long wires like this, that as you build things with lots of connections, you're going to have a lot more luck if you plug things into this bigger board and you use the shorter, neater wires. Okay. One more thing I hope you can get. Again, if all you have is the eLEGO kit, you can make all of this work with just the eLEGO kit. But as we're moving forward in future directions on this DHT11 project, it would be nice if you had one of these little uh, Arduino Nanos. And what you can see the Nano is, it's like a smaller version of the uh, Arduino. Okay, and if you get the the nano version of the Arduino, you see what I can do is I can plug it into this board and then I can plug the other things into the board and then it's much easier to get something I can walk around with. Now, if you're running jumpers from the normal Arduino Uno over to your board and you're just using these types of wires as you walk around probably you're going to have things shaking loose so if all you have is the eLEGO great but if you want to really completely do things right you want to get one of these Arduino Nanos and you want to get the uh, larger breadboard and you want to get the more elegant wires. What I will do is all this stuff that I'm giving you a heads up on for future lessons, you can find in the links down below. And don't hate me because I tell you what you need, all right? A lot of times I get a lot of hate over that. But, okay, enough of an introduction. Let's go ahead and move forward in getting this thing hooked up. Half the battle on... Uh, this particular project is getting the library installed. All the things that we've done so far in these tutorials, the libraries are already included with the standard download of the <clears throat> Arduino IDE. So all you got to do is do this uh, pound include in your code. You don't have to actually go install the library. Well, for the DHT11, this will be the first time that you actually have to install a library and so that means you will get to learn something you will learn something today okay so let's see first thing we need to do is get the library and I need to go to a better view here 
All right, I think you can see that. And what you just search on is DHT11 space Arduino space library. You want the library. <clears throat> and then it looks like the second one down is a site called www.arduinolibraries.info. And so the major heading is DHT Sensor Library, Arduino Libraries. I'm going to click there. And then here you can see all of these, and you can see that it's kind of periodically updated. As of the time I am making this video, the last release date is February 18th of 2019. So I'm going to go ahead and get that. When I click on this, notice that it downloads as a zip file. And so if you look down here in uh, my lower left, if you're on uh, Google Chrome, when I click this, you can see down there the download start. And in fact, it goes pretty quickly. Now you have to understand this is a zip file. You can't take the zip folder and put it in your library folder. You've got to open the zip folder. Okay. And then here you can see my open zip folder. And then let me make a little room. I'm trying to continue to do this where you can see everything. And then where did my zip folder go? Okay, so this is the zip folder. And then you look at the contents of the zip folder. And it's a DHT sensor library. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it and drop it to my desktop. Okay, now I'm going to kill this zip window. This is what I pulled out of the zip window. Now we have to go and install the library. So we will come back to our Arduino. Okay. Now you have to kind of figure out where your particular Arduino sketchbook is. And the way you do that is you come under File and you look at pref Preferences. Okay. And for me, mine's in C. Users, Paul M, Documents, and Arduino. All right, so now I need to kill this and I need to go there. So I'm going to open another uh, folder here, uh, File Explorer. Okay, and where did I want to go? Well, it was Documents, and then it was Arduino. Okay. And then what do I want? I want libraries. Well, if you look, mine is already there, but let's delete it. I will delete that. Pretend that you didn't see that, that it wasn't there. And then you come over and you get this unzipped folder and you drag it and drop it into your libraries folder. Okay, and now it's there. And so now you should have the library installed. So we learned something new today. We learned how to install a library. Key thing is to be able to find out where your Arduino software was, uh, uh, was loaded. And that we did by preference. And then looking at the sketchbook location. So now we should have a library. And so let's just check that. Uh, if I just do a pound include and then the library name is dht.h, uh, like that. OK, that's, uh, that's interesting. This include is a little bit different. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and download that and see if it likes it. OK, it recognizes it. I don't know why I used to we would go like this, I think. I wonder if there's really a difference. I'm learning in real time along with you. That seems to like that as well. So, I'm, so maybe either either way would uh, work. But what you don't do is you don't put a semicolon on the end. So <clears throat> where are we here? We are able to load the library. So what do we need to do now? What we need to do now is we need to hook up our uh, we need to hook up our temperature and pressure sensor according to this bond out. And I am wondering if I can real quickly add. Now let me just let me just show you that that when you're looking at it, the pin on your left will go to pin two, 
and then the center pin is 5 volts and the right pin is going to be ground. Okay, so it's going to go pin 2, VCC, and ground, or pin 2, 5 volts, and ground. So let's see if we can look over here and do that. All right, so you can play along with me here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in like this so you can see it. And then what did we say? We said that the left pin, as you're looking on, on it like this, this first pin is going to be what? The first pin is going to be pin 2. So we are going to go to the Arduino and go to pin 2. This I think is important. You can't just use any pin. You really need to use pin 2 because we've got some stuff going on with the libraries. And then what is next? We have the center pin hooked to 5 volts. Okay. And I am going to start over. I am going to use a white wire from the center. White wire from the center to uh, okay. Left goes to pin two. There's a reason that I'm so confused today. Left Okay, do you see that the left of the three pins, there's three pins, the left one goes to pin two. What I got off on is I like to use a red wire, which is the center one, which is going to go to the five volts on the Arduino. So right, five volts on the Arduino goes to the center. And then that leaves the ground pin and uh, looking for a black ground pin wire that is long enough. I don't, so I'll use a blue one. Okay, so the right pin, the rightmost pin, okay, blue, is going to go to GND. All right. So we will review. When you are looking at it as I had it oriented in the overhead camera, left is green, center is red, and the right goes to ground. So left is 2, center goes to 5 volts, and right goes to ground. All right, so let's come back over here. I think we have this hooked up now. Looks nice. Now what we have to do is we've got to start writing some code. And so I need to go to a nice code view for you. And let's see if this one is going to work. I believe this one will work right. So first thing you have to do is you have to include the library. How do we include the library? We include the library by saying pound include, pound include, and then the open triangular capital DHT.H, you have to type it exactly like that. Now we've got to provide some more information. Next we have to tell it what type we have, so we set a constant. We haven't done this before because I really don't like using constants even there's, though there's reasons to use them. We can define a constant. A constant is like a variable but that never changes and you do that by define. <coughs> this is saying that I'm going to make this a constant. And the word, the constant that I want is type. And then what type is it? DHT11. Why is it DHT11? Because that is the sensor that we are using. This is the DHT11. There's several other similar uh, devices that you can use with this library, but we're using the DHT11. And then we've got to have, tell it where we connected it. Int sense pin. Where did we connect this? We connected it to pin 2. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, what else do we need to do? Well, we have to create the object. We have to create the object. And we are going to use, uh, create what type of object? The DHT, OK? And then what am I going to call it? I'm going to call it HT. So the object is HT. And so when I interact with it, I'm going to interact with HT. And this is coming from the DHT library. Now I have to tell it two things. S since 
pin. When I create the object, it's got to know where it's connected, and then the type, which we set up as a constant above. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we got to set up our variables. Float. This device will measure humidity, so we'll say humidity. Float. It will measure temp C, centigrade temperature. Float. It will measure temp F. Why are we using floats? Well, our temperatures are always round numbers. No, they're not. Relative humidity is not a round number. They can be the in-between number. So that's what we are going to do. Then we come down to our void setup. We always need to start, almost always, start the serial monitor. Serial.begin 9600. <clears throat> OK. Uh, HT.begin. So we're going to start, you know, we, we set up the object, we created the object up here, the HT object. Now we have to start it. We have to begin it, ht.begin. And then anytime I do something like this with a library I'm not exactly sure of and a component I'm not exactly sure of, I like to just put in a delay, just like, uh, let's call it set time. Just to get, make sure that you give everything time to set up. Sometimes you don't really know what's going on in there. So I'll say int set time, and we'll set it to 500, which would be half a second. That looks pretty good. Now in our loop, what do we want to do? <clears throat> we want to read humidity. So that would be humidity is equal to Humidity is equal to what's our object? HT. And then what do we want to do? We want to read humidity. I did something wrong. Uh, let's see. Read humidity. Why is it not recognizing that? Do you think that it really wants the quotes here? You see, it should, when I get down here, it should recognize read humidity. I am somewhat perplexed. Read humidity. Uh, Let's just see if I can even download that now. That is. OK, it seemed to be happy with that. I'm just I'm a little unclear why it didn't recognize recognize that as a command. Perhaps later we will find out what's wrong. Float temp, I mean, uh, temp C is equal to ht dot read temp temp. Temperature. Darn it, it recognizes that. Okay, let's go temp f is equal to ht dot read temperature. And this you say true. True what? True that you want to read in uh Fahrenheit. So this really is kind of crazy. I would have thought, you know, the parameter would have been F and the other one C or the other one should have been false, but this is just the way it works. Okay. You would not be able to believe how much it bothers me that we are not able to do this. Okay. Let me give you one other heads up. If this isn't working, like if it's not finding the library, sometimes you, when you install a new library, you have to kill Arduino and then reopen Arduino, and then it will find the library. So if it's not finding your library, kill Arduino and then reopen it, and it should work. Okay. This is just perplexing me why it's not finding read humid T unless I am in some crazy way not spelling that right, which has been known to happen. Okay, so now let's uh, let's do some prints here. We are going to say uh, serial dot print, and what am I going to print? I am going to print uh, 
humidity. This is a string. So this is just going to be a label and serial.print. And then I'm going to print what I read as humidity. And then I'm going to put my semicolons in. Better late than never on that serial.print. <coughs> now I am going to print uh, and I'll put a space there temperature C and space. Put good spaces in there so that this looks good when it prints out and then serial.print and then this is Temp C, better late than never on a semicolon, and print does start with a P, serial.print, uh, space C, space, and then Serial dot print and then temp f temp f and then serial dot print yes print ln we are done and this is uh, space f space I have no idea what that's going to do. Okay, so we've got that going. Let me get further out of your way and let's see if this crazy thing is going to work. You can see right here behind me is the serial monitor. So when we run this thing, you will see. I'm, I'm going to take a shot of coffee. This is crazy. Okay, everyone hold your breath. Boom, it downloaded. Let's call up the serial monitor and see what... Oh, look at that. We are getting some numbers here. Okay. One thing is, is that this is running crazy. I need to put a delay in there. So I'm going to put a delay and I'll just, see, I'll just say DT for delay time. Okay. I will come back up here and I will say int delay time equals, let's put uh, 1000 like that. And let's download it again. I hate having things run past the, the serial monitor that fast. And you can actually run into problems if you're printing faster than you can do things. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to hit the reset button here and start over. And I'm going to say clear output. I want to get a humidity is 54. Uh, temperature C26. Uh, this, this, I, you probably, you guys probably caught this, but I said temperature C, and then I put a C on the end of it. So I'll just say temperature like that, and then let's start this over. Okay, humidity is 53, temperature is 26C and 79F. Boom! Man, we got this thing working. Look at that temperature pressure on the serial monitor. Very good. Very, very, very good. Most excellent. Most excellent. So you see, the sensor is pretty easy to use. The thing that you've just got to do is you've got to install the library. That's the main thing. And you've got to be careful when you install that library, right? You open the zip, you drag the folder out of the zip onto your desktop, you get rid of the zip folder, and then you drag it into that library folder. And to do that into the library folder, you got to know where your sketchbook is, and you do that by looking at preferences. And if you do that, then you can do everything. Let's see if this actually works. Like, let me... Let me blow on it and see if I can get the temperature to go up. Well, if I blow on it, really the temperature and the uh, the temperature and the humidity should go up. Look at that. Humidity did go up. And let's see, temperature didn't change much. 
Yeah, temperature went up a little bit, but man, oh yeah, temperature went up and the humidity really went up. Now the question is, after breathing on it, do you have a little bit of a condensation thing? Like, is it going to take a second for the humidity to go back down? My feeling is probably yes, because if you actually blow on something, the humidity can take a little while to go back down. But what we can clearly see is we can see that the temperature, uh, the temperature in F and the uh, and the uh, temperature in C are going uh, are going down, and so we can see that kind of interesting that you know perhaps when you blow on it like that, okay, the humidity is now starting to come down, and so that's good, starting to drop pretty good now. But you can imagine that just your breath on there, if it, if if the condensation was on there, it would take a little while for that to to come off, and so. That is pretty exciting. That is pretty exciting. So this has been, uh, my goodness, what lesson is this? This is like lesson number, uh, lesson number 50. And so I need to give you an assignment for lesson number 51. What is our goal here? Our goal is to become mobile, to become untethered. And so if we are going to become untethered, one of the first things that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put an LCD display on there. And so your assignment for number 50 is to hook this up with an LCD display. And the LCD display just uh, do humidity and temperature F. Like on the first line you can do humidity and then on the second line you can use uh, temperature F. And then also I will tell you guys that as I'm trying to get ready to be going mobile, next week I'm going to be doing this with the Nano. Now you don't have to do it with the Nano. Uh, you can do it with the eLego. But this is kind of like what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be trying to get this on here like this and then this here like this, okay, and then the sensor there, and then you see how neatly I'm going to try to wire between the Arduino Nano and the LCD with the sensor there. Also remember with this LCD display you're going to have to have the potentiometer. And so you are going to, I think we're quickly going to be hitting the limits of what all we can hook to the to this board, hence my desire for you to get the uh, larger PC board in the at the link below. Okay, so at a minimum in lesson number 50 I want you to have the Arduino, the LCD, and the sensor hooked up and then displaying your results to the uh, to the LCD and if you are able to get your hands on a nano so you can have a little bit more sturdy connection because you see the problem is going to be if you're moving this around and something comes loose then you're going to start getting uh, you're going to start getting bad data and so we're going to try to go to those neater circuit builds. Okay this has been Paul McWhorter from toptechboygup.com uh, you guys, your assignment, I've given you your assignment. Also think about giving me a thumbs up. Think about sharing this with other people. What I'm really hoping is, I'm hoping we can begin to kind of build a community of people that like to work together on these projects. And you can see my videos are a little long because I do it with you, right? We're, we kind of work on this together. And I, I might sound like I'm rambling, but I'm just talking out loud how I thought when I was an engineer, right? I, I spent my career as a, as a very successful engineer. So as I'm going through these videos, I'm talking out loud how I would think through things when I was working as an engineer. Okay, Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. Go get your homework done. Come back next week and let's see how you did. I will talk to you guys later.